This is a story that connects forests and the sea. It's a story about harvesting white oak at Berea College in Kentucky that will be used in the restoration of the Western Flyer, the purse saner that author John Steinbeck and marine biologist Edward F. Ricketts chartered to the Sea of Cortez in 1940. When the Western Flyer Foundation completes the project in 2021, the restored Western Flyer will travel along the Pacific coast, docking in Monterey, Point Townsend, Washington, and in other communities to engage in educational outreach. So this is a transformation story or a rebirth story um, of a boat that was at the bottom of the sea, um, dragged up from the ocean floor, and then a man buys it who has loved the Sea of Cortez and Steinbeck, uh, so he sets out to restore it because he said, people are drawn to the original thing. Uh, of course, a lot of the wood has to be replaced, that's why we're at Berea College and the Forestry Department, but still it will be the boat that Steinbeck and Ricketts took to the Sea of Cortez. It's a purse saner, it's a fishing boat. You know, so the Western Flyer fell right into all of those checklists, those parameters of, of worthy of restoration. So uh, you, you looked at the project, historically significant. It was a pretty tired boat. It had sunk three and a half times in its life. Uh, it had been neglected for the last 20 years of its life and had a lot of hard life prior to that neglect. So it definitely needed to be looked at closely. If it wasn't historically significant, uh, if it didn't have a place in history that needed to be preserved, uh, it would have been a very, dis very difficult decision to make to restore that boat. For me personally, coming to Berea was revisiting the South and a place I'd been 35 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, I was a potter and so I came here to see the ceramics at Berea. So when I heard about Chris talking about lumber and logging in Berea. I was so excited, A, to revisit the place that I'd heard about over the years, and B, I think the model, as I heard about what Berea was doing with the college um, outreach program, with crafts, with sustainability, it became more and more exciting for me personally. I was led to Berea College through a, a series of uh, fateful decisions to come to Berea College, but now I'm really embracing this idea of from tree to sea. You know, Berea College has embraced the idea of sustainable harvest their forest, to manage their forest for this generation and future generations. And I think that that journey from the forest, you know, today we're going to document a tree being harvested and being taken from the woods in a minimal impact to the surrounding forest. I'd like to see that journey continue from Berea College, right down to being taken to the local sawmill, sawn here in Kentucky, put onto a truck, the journey to Port Townsend where we'll steam bend that frame uh, in the next few months into the Western Flyer, and then continue that journey, that piece of wood, right to the Sea of Cortez. Uh, kind of a full circle of this following one piece of wood through its entire cycle of use uh, in a sustainable way. So I think it's the, the journey now, I've really started to embrace the whole, the, the story is pretty phenomenal. It's, it's, it's grown so much in my mind, uh, the connection with Berea, and it just seems perfect connections. One of our labor students was looking for a project. They said, how about figuring out how to design something? I mean, he started from scratch, not even knowing what an eco brick wow. was, to having stuffed all of those, created So what the are they used for? for? They're used for building. They're, for, they're used like bricks. Wow. We want to make benches um, that are called benches made out of eco bricks. Hmm. So I we, because so many people dispose of water bottles here in the forest, of course. so we're trying to recycle them, reuse them. I'm Wendy Zagria Warren. I'm director of the Forestry Outreach Center at Berea College. Uh, I work with a team of two VISTAs, one AmeriCorps, and five labor students, and we work as a close team on all operations of the Outreach Center. So looking at, as you walk in the forestry center and see the plastic bottles as bricks, I, I thought, yes, that's, that's a great project for the Western Flyer to think about, because we are very concerned with plastic and oceans. And how can you 
collect plastics. What can you do with them once you collect them rather than put them in a landfill? And so to make plastic bricks and make structures out of plastic bottles is just a great, a great idea. So I think when you go to a place that's thinking about su sustainability as is Berea, you, your mind is just, you know, nurtured. Uh, and I've gotten all sorts of ideas why I've been here. So not only did I come here for the story of the, the logging with horses and mules, but I have stories to take away about what Berea is doing that can enhance the Western Flyers educational outreach. The boat again was built 95% out of Douglas fir. It did have white oak, which is why we're here at Berea College today, is white oak steam bent frames through its middle section of the boat, or that'd be the, the rib cage of the boat would have been steam bent white oak frames. So sourcing the material, you, you need to source some materials because they are the only materials that will work. For a steam bent frame, white oak is the only choice. It takes more time and high quality uh, sites to grow a white oak and you have to hang on to it, leave it there long enough to get to grow enough volume around that long stem length to where whenever you saw it up, you know, there's there's clear wood um, in that. So the uh, the logs that we're supplying are about 110 years old and the Berea College Forest, um, you know, has some sites that are fertile enough to where that you've got the the long height, the the height on the trees, and we've left them long enough to attain the the size required. You can imagine what if, what if going uh, we have in recent years have been utilizing horse logging, horse and mule logging, and the reason for that is, like I mentioned, we're a managed watershed, which means that our forest has pretty rough terrain. It's it's hilly here. The topography is pretty, pretty challenging for logging, but those slopes run into our watershed, which provides drinking water for the Berea and the surrounding area, about a billion gallons a year. So for this project, we've uh, utilized uh, horse and mule logging. The biggest problem when you're dropping humongous trees like this is not to tear everything up around it. We have to really have skilled directional felling. That's that's our biggest challenge when you've got these huge mass crowns up there, is to not tear everything else up and way down. And so far, we've we've done a good job with it. It's a big tree usually goes the way he wants to go, and that's the problem is to make him go just a little bit different way. Sam, he's a good tree feller. Timber's like any other farm crop; it needs to be harvested when it's ripe. It has to be managed to, to get the best results. We focus more on what we leave than what we take. And most of these guys focus more on what they can get, the right now. And I'm, I'm trying to make this mean something that I can feel good about. I don't think everybody that comes through here is going to be a horse logger, but I, th I hope that everybody that comes through here leaves with the thought that they want to make a positive impact on the planet. Do better, pick up your plastics, recycle, dedicate your career to it, or even just talk to people and educate them about what's happening to the planet, what's being done to the planet, what can be done to prevent the negative implications of our actions. When the boat is restored, it's going to be an educational vessel. So that's, it's going to be equipped with the latest scientific equipment, first of all. So graduate students could work on it, research scientists, and students um, from elementary school up through, uh, up through high school. So it will attract people who want to um, participate in the sort of educational platforms of the vessel. Um, and it'll sail up and down the west coast occasionally to Mexico as well, so it'll be a boat that stops in various communities. So the education programs are going to be community-based, because that's going to be, I think, very important uh, to mirror um, Steinbeck and Ricketts' thinking, to look at communities and to see what communities, uh, what kind of programs communities are already embracing and how the Western Flyer can build on that. Uh, both educational missions are about connecting people with the place they're in. Um, this, the 
the boat is going to go up and down the west coast and dock in places as I understand it and invite um, school groups onto the boat and they'll be learning about the ocean while they're on the ocean. Similarly, when people come to the Berea College Forest, they're learning about the forest by entering the forest. And it's a very different kind of learning when your feet are on the ground than when you're in, a in the four walls of a classroom that are human made rather than made by the natural world. So this is, this is just a great opportunity, I feel like, where the, the administration here has allowed me to have flexibility to pursue uh, forest management as, as both a science and an art. I think that, that too often the, the art of practicing forestry is, is neglected uh, and you know it's an experience-based profession as much as it is a science-based profession or it should be because every place is different and one of the things Wendell uh, advocates is place-based knowledge you know you can write a textbook about something and it may be good science but it may not uh, be applicable in the same way everywhere you need place-based knowledge too and you get that through experience and through intuitive observation as much as you do through data so uh, that's that's kind of what drives my motivation here so it's the Western Flyer Foundation, and they're based in California. The restoration's being done in Port Townsend, Washington at the Port Townsend Shipwrights. Uh, the project should be completed in late 2020 or early 21, with a return to Monterey waters in mid-21. So uh, it's an ambitious project, but it's coming along. This is a story rooted in Steinbeck and Ricketts' ecological perspective. The knowledge that all things are one thing and that one thing is all things. It is advisable to look from the tide pool to the stars and then back to the tide pool again. <laughs>